assalamu alaikum students today we will see evidences and explanation about the different planets revolving around the sun and then we'll move on to what is centripetal force and also we will discuss the chapter questions scientist used to wonder every time why doesn't the planets which revolve around the sun they are in random motion why are they fixed around a certain particular orbit nearly 1000 years ago indian mathematician and astronomer bhaskaracharya asked lot of questions about the earth and space The astronomer Bhaskar Acharya asked lot of questions about the earth. He was the head of an observatory observatory in Ujjain and he studied the movements of the planets, the sun and the moon. And he wondered why moon went around the earth. So he noticed that when you drop something on on the surface of the earth it falls towards the earth so he realized that yes there is a force with the earth which pulls all the objects towards itself and that force is the force of gravity there is also a force which is binding the planets towards around the sun that force is acting towards the center 500 years later sir isaac newton also thought about the same question that there is a force which keeps the moon to stay in orbit around the earth scientists like albert einstein and edwin hubble built a networks built on the newton's work and he they finally came to the conclusion yes there is a force of gravity which is towards which is the force which pulls all the objects towards itself also newton published his idea in a book called the law the book its name was law of gravitation there he explained and gave conclusions and evidences and he predicted that yes there is a force which acts between the planets and which keep them rotating in a fixed orbit also the existence of neptune proved the law of gravitation a force which keeps an object moving in a circle is called as centripetal force let's take few examples of centripetal force in the first image image a a girl is spinning a ball on a ring so she is applying the force in a circular manner and the force is inside at the center of the circulation so there is a centripetal force which the girl is applying to the ball if a car is in image b a car is taking a turn around a curved circular road so there the car is able to balance itself only because of the centripetal force which is acting at the center of rotation in image c in a roller coaster the loop is if you complete try to complete the loop of a roller coaster it gives you a circle so if you are at the top post position on a roller coaster ride then the force which keeps you stable up on the loop is nothing but the centripetal force which is acting towards the center of the loop and also there is centripetal forces in space the earth and the other planets they orbit orbit means they complete one full circle they rotate around they revolve around the sun 
so they don't revolve in any direction they ro revolve around the sun in a fixed orbit only so that force which keeps the planets in an orbit around the sun is due to the centripetal force which is towards the sun so if you see in the image d the red arrow indicates the centripetal force which is the force which acts between the planets and the sun towards the center of the sun so this centripetal force holds the earth and it allows the earth to move in a circular manner around the sun same is the case with the other planets which revolve around the sun on those planets also centripetal force of the sun acts on them now let's move towards the textbook questions question number 6 textbook page 29 question 6 is based on hooke's law so let us quickly recap what is hooke's law hooke's law is applied on the springs on the springs which has elasticity in it so when you apply force on a spring the spring gets stretched it gets extended so the hooke's law says that force is directly proportional to extension that means if you increase the force on the spring the extension that is the length of the spring will also increase so tamara did the same experiment using a spring and she used various weights she hung various weights on that spring and she made a table of her observations so tamara first used a force of 1 newton on the spring so the spring the length of the spring became 6 the force of 2 newton was loaded on the spring the length became 8 then on 3 it became 10.8 then on, with force 4 the length of the spring became 2 cm and with force 5 newton the length of the spring became 4 14 cm so the question here a is question 6a draw a graph of length against the force and you need to draw a line of best fit so line of best fit is the line which covers the maximum points of the graph so this is how the graph will be force you need to take it on y axis that is vertical axis and extension in centimeters is to be taken on x axis so the force is 1 to 5 so 1 to 5 values are written and forces in newtons and the extension is in centimeters and your minimum value is in the table is was 6 maximum was 14 so we could take here the multiples of 2 on x axis so that so the scale is 2 4 6 8 10 12 1 cm is 1 unit is 2 cm extension so give the given values and when we plot the values yes of course we are getting a line which is passing through all the points and that line is the line of best fit as it is shown in the image Question 6b how long was the spring when no weights were there on it So when there is no weight there was no weight on the spring what was the original weight length of the spring So here if you see the spring lengths in the table when a force of 1 newton was added the spring length was 6 and then it almost gives you the table of 2 in spring length 2 uh, 6 8 10 12 14 14. so if you see the pattern of numbers what will be before 6 which will which multiple will be before 6 which will be multiple of 2 before 6 it will be 4 cm so that means the spring length was 4 cm when there was zero force on the spring and then when force 1 newton was added then it became 6 then 6 8 10 12 and 14 the multiples of 2 are followed here so the answer b 6b is length of was length of the spring was 4 cm also you can take this value from the line if you see the line of best fit you see the line is touching the x axis at the value 4 
so that means at 0 falls the val extension was 4 so this value you can see it from the graph also that at 0 falls the graph point the line of the graph is starting at 4 centimeters question c what force could it be needed to make the spring 8.5 centimeters long so here again the value is to be taken from the graph so if you see i have marked it in the graph between 8 and 10 will be 9 i have shown it with the red and between 8 between 8 and 10 is 9 and between 8 and 9 is 8.5 so if you draw a dotted line up and then move towards the left the value of force which you are getting at 8.5 extension is 2.5 newtons so the answer is force of 2.5 newtons will be needed to make the spring length 8.5 centimeters so the this value again you need to take it from the graph question d has the spring been stretched beyond its elastic limit so now here the line of the graph is a straight line the line did not become curve if the line ha would have become curve that means the spring has lost its elasticity you can say okay it has reached it, its elastic limit but here the line is a graph line is a straight line so it indicates that no the spring has not reached the elastic limit answer 6c e. what would happen if tamara remove the weights from the spring so what will happen when the all the weights of, of the spring are removed the spring will go back to its original length and the original length where no weight is added on the spring is 4 centimeters which we calculated in answer b so the answer is it will return to its original length question 7 which of these statements about mass and weight are correct so let's quickly recall the definitions of mass and weight mass is the amount of matter in an object and it is measured in kilograms or grams while weight is the force of activity force of gravity acting on an object and it is measured in newtons so recalling these two definitions let us see which statements are correct and which are wrong first one weight is measured in kilograms false it is incorrect why because weight is measured in newtons b mass is amount of stuff in an object amount of stuff or matter or atoms or particles in an object is mass so it is correct b is correct c weight is a force yes weight is a what is weight the def definition of weight force of gravity acting on an object so force of gravity gravity is a force only so weight is also a force yes it is correct true mass is measured in newtons false mass is measured in kgs or grams let's move on to question number eight now question eight is imagine you are holding a tennis ball in a beaker so you have to take a beaker fill it with water and a tennis ball you are holding you have to hold a tennis ball in that water so you are placing your hand on the ball but when you remove your hand what happens is the ten tennis ball rises to the surface and it starts floating but if you take it out of the water and let it go then again if you put it inside just leave it without inserting your hand in the water it goes off so now there are sentences given and you need to complete those sentences using the words bigger than smaller than the same as so the first one 8a when the ball is accelerating up the weight is smaller than the up thrust so if the ball is up what will happen is the weight is weight is the force acting downwards and if the objects are in water then the force which is acting on the objects which keep them floating is the force which is called as up thrust so here up thrust is small weight is smaller than up thrust that is why the force upwards is more so the object is the ball is accelerating up b answer when the ball is floating the up thrust is same as the weight so the point when the ball is going up at that time up thrust is more but then when up thrust and weight both gets balanced both become same then the ball floats and the c1 when you take the ball out of the beaker and drop it in the weight drop it the weight is bigger than the air resistance 
Let's see the ninth one now. Alan Shepard was a fifth person to walk on the moon. He took a golf club and a ball and made a shot. The ball went a lot further than it would on the earth. Give two reasons. Okay. So, if you... Alan Shepard, he noticed that the ball went far away on the on moon than earth. So, what are the two reasons for this? The first reason is the force of gravity on the moon is lesser than the gravit force of gravity on the earth. How much it is? The force of gravity on moon is one sixth of that on the earth. That means if a person is weighing 60 kgs on the earth, so 60 divided by 6, he will weigh only 10 kgs on the moon. So the gravity of on the moon is one sixth of that of the earth. So that is one reason why the ball went further away on the surface of the moon. Second reason is air resistance on earth is more, okay, while air resistance on moon is less. Question number 10, there are options given lubrication, drag, elastic limit and proportional and uh, the definitions in simple sentences are given. We have to match the definition with the and write the correct, choose the correct word from the list. So the first question is, you put oil on a chain to reduce the force of friction. So the process of oiling machines or oiling a chain, that process is called as lubrication. So answer 8 a is lubrication. Next, if you stretch a spring, okay, and you leave it, it comes back to its original position. But if you go on stretching the spring, and then you will notice that it got so much stretch that it, it's not coming back to its original shape now. So that means the spring has reached its elastic limit. So it cannot come to its original shape again. So that limit is called as elastic limit. So the question 10b is a spring will be permanently extended if you exceed this. So the answer here is elastic limit. Question 10c is if you double the force on the spring the extension will. So here if you see the Hooke's law force is directly proportional to extension that means directly proportional means if you increase the force the extension will also increase. So if you double the force the extension will also be double. That means the correct answer is proportional. If one quantity increases the other also increases then it is called as proportional. Next question, question 10D. Air resistance and friction are often called as, so friction is an opposing force. Air resistance is also a friction which acts on the objects which are in the air and another name for friction or air resistance is nothing but drag. So answer 10D is drag. Let's see question 11 now. A person with a mass of 70 kg on earth has a weight of 700 newtons. Is it correct? What's the formula for weight? Weight is mass into gravity. W is equals to mg. So if what's the value of g for numerical purpose? Actually the force of gravity is 9.8 into 10 in 9.8 meter per second square. But then for numerical purpose we use the value as 10. So if you want to convert mass to weight, you need to multiply the given mass by 10. So 70 into 10 gives you 700. Yes, it's correct. A person has a mass of 700 kg and the weight will be 700 as 70 into 10 is 700. Now let's see whether the st given statements are true or false. Eleven. Question 11a. If you go to a more massive planet, your weight will be bigger. So yes, so if you recall the differentiation between mass and weight which I had given you, mass of an object may change, okay, mass of an object, sorry, mass of an object does not change even if the planets or places change, but yes, weight may change because weight is the force of gravity acting on the object, so weight, force of gravity is different on different planets, so that is why the first answer is true. Question 11b, if you weigh on a planet, if your weight on a planet is 300 newtons, that means the gravitational force is stronger there. So 
so the answer is false 11c a planet with a weaker gravitational field would make your weight smaller true because weight is nothing but the gravitational force which is acting on us so if the force is less the weight will also be less so it's true 11d a planet with a stronger gravitational field will make your mass bigger false there is no connection between mass and force of gravity the connection is of weight and force of gravity so your gravitational field that means the force of gravity and mass is connected here so there is so it is false question 12 bhaskaracharya and newton both thought about the moon question 12a what was the question that they both asked about the moon so the answer is they used to think why moon goes around the earth in a fixed orbit so that's the answer 12b what was the explanation that they both worked on so why did they what did they come to know that why moon is revolving or around the earth it is only because of the force of gravity so answer b is force of gravity question c why was the discovery of neptune important discovery of neptune was important because it gave a proof to law of gra- to the book in the book law of gravitation so it was a proof of that book of the experiment of the evidences that is why its discovery was important question 12 be name a scientist who developed their explanation so their explanation means the explanation of bhaskar acharya and newton so who developed uh, the uh, explanations on their theories albert scientist albert einstein thank you